one day I, I went home and I was in the kitchen looking at my kids, um, Sarah and Connor, uh, playing, and they were young, in the family room. And it just hit me. And I think that was the first nudge of God, saying, you got to make a decision. Either they're just a random freak of nature, or they have a purpose. Wow. And it was like, that was, that, that was a wow moment. I was yeah. like, okay, you're right. I have to make that decision because... So, Patrick. Hey, Jeff. This is Patrick Jones. <laughs> um, one day I was riding my bike. You were. <laughs> by your church, looking for an opportune moment to meet the pastor. I think it was yeah. probably in September or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You'd been here for Early a couple fall. months. And I saw you walking, and I thought I had never met you before. And so I just pulled my bike up, and I go, hey. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that, that what do you want? Yeah, what do you <laughs> want? Well, I'm the guy that prays for pastors. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> but you invited me into your office. And that, was, that really said a lot to me because you, had, you made time. Mm. And a lot of times, leaders tend to kind of be isolated when it comes to their schedule. Oh, okay. They are way too busy, mm. way too much on their plate. And um, I was just impressed that, I mean, you had me come in and we talked for a while. I found out that you like coffee shops and yep, like coffee. Yep. And so I was like, this is an amazing guy. <laughs> and so we, we've met a couple times and talked. But uh, today I just want to I want to open your life up to the world, okay. at least in Longview, Kelso, Cal you know, Cowlitz yeah. County. And... Um, Give people an opportunity to know who the new pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran is. Okay, I and appreciate that. And um, so you have spent 28 years in Silicon Valley working, um, developing a career, then made a transition to Idaho, mm -hmm. which seems like the most unlikely place to go, and ended up in June of 2023 here in Longview. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that journey. That seems like a... That seems like it's got a few turns in it. There, there was a few turns in that, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I'll start actually back in school. So graduated high school, went on to college, University of Minnesota in my town. Um, and then uh, my town, I wanted to be in engineering. Didn't have that engineering degree. So I transferred to Colorado. And I lived in Fort Collins, Colorado. Went to Colorado State University. Yeah. Well, I was 19, it's the first time away from home. Yeah, you're smiling, you get it, right? Been there, done that, you yeah. Know, um, there, there were ski resorts, there was uh, new people from all over the world, quite literally. And so um, I got a little de uh, <coughs> distracted, <laughs> off the rails, if you will. And That's a so, great uh, place to be distracted, Colorado Well, yeah, Springs. Colorado, uh, it, was, it, it was a good time, uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado. Yeah. But, um, and so I ended up, the uh, registrar called me into the office at CSU one day, and he says, Patrick, you know, a 0 0.5 GPA <laughs> is not what we're striving for <laughs> at Colorado State University. <laughs> and I said, I get it, I get it. And so uh, I dropped out of school. Um, eventually, um, probably a God thing looking back, my mother called, said, hey, there's a new engineering program, are you interested? And I immediately said yes. So it took me 11 years to get my bachelor's degree with about six years of hardcore playing in between. Yeah. But once I did that, um, I graduated with a bachelor in computer engineering and received a job at Ford Aerospace in San Jose, California. And that's what kicked off the career in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And so I moved out there in 89, and very quickly they said, well, one of our guys is moving over to the dark side, which meant they had a secret government program going on. He's going over there. I need you to take over the Cisco. And I said, great, what's a Cisco? He said, don't worry about it. You'll figure it out. It does <laughs> IP networking. I said, great, what's an IP? <laughs> so I got landed into this place of learning Cisco system networking, and they were uh, just getting really big at that time. And I said, I want to go to work there. Wow. And so it took me about six months of trying, uh, knocking on doors, but I, I got the interview, I landed a job in customer support over there, 
And so in uh, the summer of 90, I started working for Cisco and the career uh, just took off. I was there 10 years, left there, was recruited to another small company that grew very big called Network Appliance. Uh, after that, went to another small company that grew very big called uh, VMware, did virtualization. And so, yeah, I enjoyed uh, in sales and marketing, uh, traveled the world, um, talked to people all over the place um, about different technologies. And, um, and they were just, a lot of it was just being launched and so it was yeah. new and exciting stuff. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it was and the companies grew. I, there was less than 300 people when I started at Cisco. There was 25,000 when I left. Wow. And all three of these companies just kind of exploded. And it was a lot of work, um, but a lot of good times too. Um, but kind of celebrating. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, big time that way. Yeah, especially at Cisco. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they like to have fun. But um, when it comes into moving to Idaho, that had a lot to do um, with God, and God was not in my life at that time. Um, and uh, I don't know if you want much of that story or how that ends up. Whatever you want, whatever road you want to go down. You know, well, so that part's important to get me to Idaho. So um, my brother and I were quite literally reading some work, uh, books and just talking for fun, uh, hobbyist, if you will, about the universe and the size of the universe, where things come from, et cetera. And we were discussing this book by an uh, MIT professor named Alan Guth, and he's talking about the inflationary universe and, and dark matter and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and it was a lot of fun, but one day I, I went home and I was in the kitchen looking at my kids, um, Sarah and Connor, uh, playing, and they were young, in the family room. And it just hit me. And I think that was the first nudge of God, saying, you got to make a decision. Either they're just a random freak of nature, or they have a purpose. Wow. And it was like, that was, that, that was a wow moment. I was yeah. like, OK, you're right. I have to make that decision because not for their sake, right? This is for my sake. Yeah. Because but still for their sake. And, and for yeah. their sake. But I, it's like, how do I look at uh, these kids that I adore, that I love, that I'd give my life for, right? And so that started me on a journey of reading and um, asking questions. And the woman that I was uh, with, I was divorced. I was uh, dating um, Kathy. She was a Christian. And um, another part of that story, but um, I didn't have good experiences with Christians in the past. But Kathy was the first one that would um, slow down and listen to my questions and wouldn't bang me over the head with a really thick book and say, yeah. you know, here's the answer. Um, if I asked a hard question, she'd say, I don't know. And that was really refreshing. So did the, the questions come from your own inquisitiveness? Or can you remember the first Christian book that really grabbed a hold of you? Yeah. What was it? A Case for Christ. Oh, uh -huh. Lee yeah. Strobel. Lee yeah. Strobel, yeah. So uh, after having these discussions, I was dating Kathy. I was literally, Jeff, I was driving home from San Jose to my house. I had to be on the freeway. And I came up to my exit, and it was one of these freaky things where <laughs> it's like the car wouldn't turn. It's like I, I can't go to my house. And immediately I knew I had to go to the next town where there was a bookstore, and I bought two books. Oh, wow. I went in thinking I was going to buy one book. Quite honestly, I don't remember what that was. I ended up buying Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ, and a Bible. That was the first time you had a Bible? It's the first time I ever bought one. Wow. I was given one in third grade uh, when I was confirmed, if you will, in the Episcopal Church yeah. as a little kid. Wow. But I never read it. So that was real. That was, have you ever told that story before? Um, not to you. Because <laughs> that's like one of those quintessential moments when God yeah. intervenes. He did. And distracts us enough to go down a path we would never have chosen to yeah. go down. Yeah, that's, and, um, that's so cool. And, and look, at in my life at that time, I wouldn't have called it God like grabbing the wheel and not let me do that, yeah. but it became you know, pretty obvious looking in the rearview mirror. 
And being an engineer, Lee Strobel wrote, just from his heart, from a place of atheism to a place of faith, on a journey uh, to disprove God. Yeah. And, and he ended up, um, you know, a great evangelist for Christ. Yeah. And so that book had a big effect on me. I wouldn't say it pushed me over the edge. Um, but at the same time, I started reading this book called The Bible. Yeah. And I ask people, right, they go, okay, so where should I start? Read, I'll go to John or, or read some of the Psalms. And, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to read it like a book. So I started on page one, and I just started flipping pages. And I went through, it took me several months, and I got through the end. And I remember this explicitly. I finished the Bible, right, the end of Revelation. I went, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well... If that very first verse is true, yeah, you know, in the beginning God created. If that's true, then the rest of this book is plausible. That's what I said to myself. Okay. Well, the, that's it, an engineer's approach. It's an engineering yeah. approach. If that verse could be true, yeah. then I guess I can accept the rest of this book. And that, I think, acceptance that this could be true. Yeah. Um, kept me searching and, you know, eventually drove me to the knees. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was, uh, that, that, that was, that was quite interesting. And so Kathy and I dated, we got married. Um, when we did that, uh, of course, we moved in together. And then she says, we got to find a church. So she found a church for us. I'm like, I don't know anything about churches. Fine. I'll go where you want us to go. Uh, great church. The pastor had a Saturday morning men's Bible study. I got hooked into it some months later, um, started attending, and there was one guy in the class that when the pastor was stumped, he just always went to him, Yeah. right? He says, you know, it, it, tell me the answer. I need, I need some help here. And so one day I walked up to him and I said, say, um, how do you know so much? You know, uh, when Scott doesn't have the answer, he's always coming to you. How do you know so much? And he told me his story. And, it, and part of his story was when he graduated, he didn't have a job. He said, I decide to stay in school and get my master's in theology. And the moment he said that, I said, I'm going to do that. Another one of those. <laughs> that's that's so cool it's, yeah it was in the basement of our church I'm just having coffee that. i go i don't even know what a seminary is <laughs> i've never heard the word before but i'm gonna go do that yeah and within a year i was enrolled at uh, fuller theological seminary getting my master's in theology wow yeah is that is that like the way you're wired do you I just guess. jump into stuff um some things. You don't seem cautious. Yeah. But Some you seem things. like adventurous. You know, when something seems right, then I'll, I'll jump into it. Yeah. 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 There's some things that are like, yeah, maybe not. Are you in Idaho yet? Uh, no. So that started, it uh, was probably 2006. I started uh, my seminary um, experience and, and being a student. Uh, it was part time. I was working. I was traveling the world. Unfortunately, I had to drop out of some classes. I had to leave school for a little while. And finally, I realized that if I don't do this full time, I'm not going to finish. And I really, really wanted to. So Kathy and I prayed about it. And um, at the end of 2010, I actually um, resigned my position at work and went to school full time so that I would finish. Yeah. And so I finally graduated in 2012. And um, during that time, I was speaking. I was filling in, not as a pastor, but as a Bible teacher, right. uh, leading some small groups, things like that. Um, and in 2014, we were visiting Idaho. Um, my wife's cousin's there, and we were visiting there. Never been there before. Right? And, and we drove from California. And, and we're driving up I-15, getting to the turnoff for Idaho Falls. And just out of the blue, Kathy's like, she's looking around. She goes, well, I could live here. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where is that coming? And I just completely blew it off, right? Yeah. I, I don't even know why she even said that. So we go in. We're there for a week. That Friday, 
we were going to leave Saturday. That Friday night, um, Kathy had gone to bed early, and I was uh, just laying down. It was about midnight. And Jeff, that's when, <laughs> that's when God really spoke to me. Yeah. And this has happened once. The other ones, I think, were these nudges, and you go along. But I'm laying in bed, and I just felt this thing come on me, and it was, <laughs> it was just in an instant. And it was not a word. I didn't hear voices. But it was like this weight that came on my chest and was off. And in that instant, I was given three words. Um, education, move here, dialogue. Wow. And I knew, I, I, I never quite understood the whole education, but I think that's just all part of the life piece. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Spirit was telling me, you're going to move here and talk about my son. Wow. And I just stood up, sat up in bed, and I had tears coming down. And I, all I could do is say, okay, yes. And um, Kathy's cousin, he's a night owl. <coughs> he was up. Uh, a different faith tradition. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I went downstairs, and I said, Jerry, i got to tell you what just happened. <laughs> and he's like, okay, tell me. And and all of a sudden, I tell him the story, and he's like in tears. And he goes, if it makes sense for anybody, it makes sense for you. That's so cool. So that was August of 2014. It took Kathy a year, and I a year, <coughs> before we actually moved to Idaho in September of 15. Um, because we were praying about it. You know, was this just some crazy thing? I was asking, you know, people that I trust. And... Uh, it was when she was in San Diego <laughs> on a business trip, staying at a five-star hotel, literally on the beach. I'm in Idaho checking some stuff out, and she calls me and says, okay, do you know where I am right now? <laughs> and she describes this beautiful paradise, the sun's going down. You've been there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and telling me she's in San Diego and all this stuff, and I'm in Idaho. I said, look, Kathy, un until you're ready, we're not moving. And she said, that's the moment you, you gave me the freedom to say yes. Ah. This wasn't, God spoke to me, we're going, pack the bags. You know, God brought us both together first. Yeah. If I was moving to Idaho, we were going to do this together, and it was going to be unified. And um, about a week later, she said, yeah, let's, let's make it happen. And then it took some time. We sold the house, and... and uh, September of 2015, moved into Idaho. Wow. And I didn't know what I was going to do there. Yeah. He said, come and talk about my son. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> so you'd finished Fuller at that point? Finished Fuller in 2012. Yeah. So you got, <laughs> you got a master's degree in yeah. theology. Right. I might as well do something with this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was just for fun. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> needed to learn Greek and Hebrew for fun. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. And you found a place there. So we, uh, we went church shopping. We started with some people, got, you know, small groups, um, had no intention to be a pastor. Uh, but we ended up at a Lutheran church there, um, wonderful pastor. And then he turned us on to a, well, uh, first I was doing um leading a group of men through a, a small group study in the summer because nobody wanted to do anything in the summer. And I said, yeah. well, I'm going to do something. And so after that, he saw some things that I could do. And he said, well, there's a small church, 25 people, 70 miles from here, and they don't have a pastor. Maybe you can fill in once in a while. So I went there and felt, uh, filled in Shepherd of the Falls Lutheran Church, American Falls, Idaho. And they called me back. And then they called me back again. And then I was in my driveway at our shop in Idaho, and I got a call, and they said, would you consider being our full-time pastor? And that was another one of those tear moments because yeah. it was like, okay, God, you're, you're starting. And this was, I moved there in 15. This was in 2018. So wow. this was three years later. And I was like, God, you're making this vision a little more clear. And so as a uh, full-time uh, pastor, a part-time um, pastor, but, uh, you know, their person, we, we worked there about three days a week. Um, I started doing that. And through that, 
the education piece came clear. I had to take some Lutheran theology. I didn't have that at Fuller. Um, and then uh, in, later in 2018, I was ordained as a uh, Lutheran pastor in the LCMC um, tradition. Yeah. yeah. Not that long ago, really. Not that long ago, no. And so you were there. Let's, let's go up to the place where you get contacted by Emmanuel. Yeah. Because I think that's interesting, too. Yeah, yeah. That. So I was at uh, Shepherd of the Falls and then another church in Idaho Falls um, through uh, situations, lost their pastor and asked me to fill in. I filled in. They asked if I would become a permanent person there. I did that into um, when COVID was raging pretty hard and then there were some problems at the church and I ended up leaving there. Um, the LCMC, which is an association of Lutheran um, congregations, has about 800 some churches and a lot of the smaller churches are looking for pastors in yeah. small towns, like the size of Longview, 40,000 or something and less, and they're looking. And it's really, really hard for them to find pastors um, financially and otherwise. And so I would get two, three, four letters a month and people saying, hey, we have an opening, are you interested? And usually I would open it and I'd look at it and go, no, I'd pray for them and throw it in the garbage. Um, a letter came in from this place called Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Longview, Washington. And I said, okay, fine, I'll open it up and read it. And I paused and I went, hmm, <laughs> interesting. And Kathy was walking through the kitchen. I said, hey, come on over here. I said, read this. And, 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 and she reads it and then, and Kathy, uh, my wife, says, huh. And when she goes, huh, that's like really, really high praise. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, well, that might work. And I'm like, what do you mean that might work? She says, yeah, that sounds interesting. We didn't know where Longview, Washington was. I had yeah. to get a map, you know, Google it. Where is it? I didn't know if it was, you know, down here where it is, close to Oregon, if it was up by uh, Seattle. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so we looked it up and sat on that for a couple of weeks, sent over an email, and I said, hey, this is me, I might be interested. They responded, and, um, and then over the another, that was January of 23, yeah. and over a six month period, um, they were praying, they were discerning, they interviewed many people, um, and ended up uh, giving me a call to come out here and we moved to Longview, Washington in June of 2023. That's awesome. I yeah. love that. I yeah. love that journey. So we were we had coffee the other day and you yeah. were showing me a document that was mm. your thoughts about casting vision for Emmanuel. Yeah. Well, what was in that that kind of gripped you so much that you said, I need to share with them Mm -hmm. where I feel like we're going. Mm. You know, it's... <laughs> I hope this doesn't come across bad for anybody who, uh, who, who's at the church or knows it, but a lot of times I'll sit behind the altar and I look out at, at a, uh, about 140 or so people and go, why are you here? Yeah. You know, I'm just not out loud. <laughs> at least I hope it's not out loud. But in my head, I'm like, why are you here? And then why are we here? And... I've asked people that in private, you know, mm -hmm. one-on-ones, coffee time. Well, I've always been a Lutheran. I was raised a Lutheran. Like, and, and it's kind of a common answer. Yeah. And so I have this need, this desire inside of me to say, let's, let's back up the bus and go back to the beginning. We were called uh, for a purpose. You know, we, we proclaim this thing we call the Great Commission. Um, but do we know what that is? Yeah. And are we on the Great Commission? Are we doing what we've been asked to do? And so um, I've had people say, you know, basically we're glad you're here. Just keep us going and we'll be fine. And we, I could do that, but it sort of sounds like almost a defeatist kind of attitude. Yeah. It's like we'll, we'll keep the lights on, you know, bring us a good message and, and we'll see you again next week. And I think uh, this Christian walk we are on is much, much more than that. Yeah. And there's a challenge constantly. And so I was uh, basically struggling that with that in my mind. And then suddenly, because of the Constitution in the church, uh, we have to have an annual meeting. 
and the annual meeting, the pastor has to give a report. And I, I was looking at the, um, <coughs> uh, talking to our uh, president of the council, and I said, I'm not giving a report. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to give a vision. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, been thinking about it, wrote it down, many different versions. I think you might have seen the last uh, version, but it's, um, it's this wonderful scene right in the beginning of John's gospel where John the Baptist is out on the river doing his thing, and a couple guys are watching him, and and, and John the Baptist points up, he goes, there's the Lamb of God. And, and these other two guys are like, what? And they start following this guy who obviously turns out to be Jesus. And Jesus turns around and looks at him. He says, what do you want? And they say, well, you know, I don't know. We want to see where you're going. He goes, come and see. Yeah. And then immediately uh, the gospel writer says, they came and saw. I mean, Jesus challenges us with this wonderful question. What do you want? And then he gives us this invitation to come and find out. Yeah. And so that's going to be part of that vision, that we're going to go on a walk. Micah 6, 8 is, is one of my favorite verses in Scripture. I was in Uganda when someone gave that to me. <clears throat> you know, what does God require of us? To, to love mercy, to act justly, and to walk humbly with him. All at three miles an hour. At three miles an hour. <laughs> at Which is a speed. considerably slower pace than anybody in our world. And the internet yeah. speed, yeah, goes a lot faster. Yeah. But God walks at three miles an hour. I think one of the saddest verses in Scripture is in Genesis 3, when the people, God said, hey, I'm here for our, <clears throat> our walk. And then they run and hide. Yeah. You know, we need to go walk with God. So it, it's a vision of... Um, of walking and listening, um, showing what could be. It's a vision of, uh, of youth, of having the teenagers run worship, the 20-year-olds coming back from a mission, and people saying, well, what did you experience? And then they give a vision. You want to know what we experienced? Yeah. Come and see. Yeah. And not to go on a mission, mission like a, uh, a noun, but to be on mission yeah. as a verb <clears throat> that we're always on mission but, but moving at uh, at god's speed and and then he'll show up some of the things i learned from silicon valley is fail it's okay to fail yeah just fail quickly yeah <laughs> you know when you know you're not going on the right path at three miles an hour it's easy to change direction um you can say okay that's not quite right but we'll we'll shift direction i think that's perfectly fine yeah so we'll start a program we'll end a program but we'll We'll walk with this idea of energy, excitement, youth. Um, maybe we'll grow. Maybe we need to do a second service. But you know what? It won't be at that church. And, and it'll be crazy because the church is paid off. We have no mortgage. Why would we go pay rent somewhere else? Yeah. And, and suddenly it hit me. It's like, okay, I wonder what the facilities guys in heaven, right? <laughs> they're, they're sitting there talking. Jesus is packing his bag, and he's going to go up and down to earth. And they're like, why would you leave heaven? It's... It's beautiful. We got all the space and food. And by the way, it doesn't cost us anything, right? Why would you go down there to them? Why don't you just zap them up here? Yeah. All right? Because we need to go where the people are. Yeah. Right? Being lost, it's a funny thing about being lost. If you're out hunting and you lose the trail, you know it. Yeah. In the kingdom, the spiritual thing, you can be lost for your life and never know it. But when God pokes you, it's usually where you are, yep. where you're living, where you're playing, where you work. And so we need to go where they are. You know, you don't know this, Patrick, but when there's a vacancy in a church, there are a group of us who pray specifically for whoever's going to fill that void, mm. that they be a person who is for something bigger than just a single church. Mm, I mean, very nice. Really, what we pray for is that they be a person who had a heart for the city. Yeah, yeah. Um, that wanted to see, wanted to be, be part of what God was doing on a journey somewhere outside of their own building. I am really excited to go with you on this journey. This yeah, is really cool. fun. I mean, I I love the fact that we have a relationship that gives me access to somebody else's vision besides just mine. 
it's so refreshing, and I'm 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 really excited about where Emmanuel Lutheran could possibly go yeah. in this whole journey and what it would look like five years from now. So exactly. I'm I just want you to know. First of all, thank you for sitting down. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Secondly, I'm for you. I'm yeah. like for you on this journey. Sweet. I can't wait to see what God does. Yeah, he's going to do some big things. Yeah. It's good. Well, thank you. Right on. Thanks. <laughs>